Hey guys, we are just about to get into this game, just waiting on one or two players, I was going to say champions, they're not champions, they're summoners actually, to be ready to play the game with us. It is going to be between BJB and Black Genesis, that's BG, uh, it's a best of three, so we're going to start off 0-0 obviously, and then hopefully one team will win, uh, unless we have another spectator bug, and then it will be 1-0, and maybe we'll even go all the way to a best of three. I am Sona. My co-casters, that's plural, for this final are The Pash and Grey Goose. Hey guys. Hello everyone. This is awesome. This is going to be so good. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be epic. <clears throat> I'm pretty pumped. Going to be epic. So I'm just going to tell the guys that we are ready. Let's go and play some League of Legends. Uh, sorry that we weren't able to spectate the second semi-final. Uh, we did have some fun though, some 1v1s and some 2v2s as well. The Pash and I demolishing with our Maokai Katarina combination. Oh yeah. That was Watch out for it in the LCS, ladies and gentlemen. Maokai Katarina. Such it's synergy. Too, too strong. Just too strong, yeah. man. Like it's just yeah. It was the heal just as well. Heal Ignite on Maokai is just obviously the way that you are meant to play the game. Um I think that Jonah might have to be I, away from his keyboard for a second? No, we are into picks and bans. Here we are. Shove this overlay up and let's have a look at what these two teams decide to uh, pick and ban. We are into champion select now indeed as we are going to go into the first game of this best of three final here. And uh, no ban has come through yet. For me, all the players still show us disconnected. Should be uh, ready within the next couple seconds though. We will see the first bans coming in here in the next three. There's Leona banned out. Such a terror from BG already, and they really did not want that in this game. Yeah, it's actually a targeted ban at Scatto55. He was talking about how Crepo inspired him to play League of Legends, and it was one of his sort of mentors, his idols, the people that he <laughs> looked up to, and they banned out Leona against him, and the Kale. That's such a targeted ban right there. Yeah, the Lewix has been excelling at playing his Kale in the mid lane. And also, in the pre-game lobby, he was like, Give me my Kale and I'll show you what I'm made of. Do you think you can take me? And instantly, as the first ban comes out, the Kale is gone. Sad, the Lewix. Now, we'll see what they do in return. And they banned out the Oriana now. Oriana, really strong. We've seen her a couple of times in this game. Actually, Oriana carried one of the games with two beautiful shockwaves. I believe that was the quarterfinal game. Has been a long day, so I can't quite remember it. 100%. Thrash getting banned out as well. Two supports in the first four bands. What do you think of that, Grey Goose? I mean, supports lately, especially these high-impact supports, have just been the ones to turn games around. And with the added gold, someone like Leona, someone like Thresh, can actually become a full tank in a 50-minute game. And that's just not something they want to deal with. Thresh, of course, also so scary the entire early game with his hooks. And if uh, BG are playing on, uh, planning on playing a little more vulnerable bot lane, maybe uh, they just don't want to deal with that terror that Thresh can really be here, as Mundo is banned out on the other side as well. Yeah, obviously they don't want that healing doctor up in the top lane, that sadism as well. Really, really strong Amundo. You need an Ignite down on him, or a Grievous Wounds passive at least, perhaps from a Morello Nomicom. But he has been banned out, so we're not going to see him getting played. However, Riven being the last ban means that Shivana is open. It means that Jarvan that we've seen a lot of today is open. There are lots of sort of the more OP, or flavor of the month champions, who are free and available. But Shen is actually the first one picked up, and he's, I mean, Shen is always strong, has always been strong, but he's not been in the basically almost holy trinity of top laners, which are basically Mundo, Shivana, and Nasus almost. You know, the three tanky meat walls and Renekton. I mean, there are a couple of people there, but Shen generally not played quite as much anymore. But here we do see him picked up, and on the other side, BG very, very quickly locking in Jarvan and Janna here. Well, Shen was played by Kanix in the first game that I watched of him in the semi-finals, and he dominated on that, was in a 2v1 lane, managed to burn Leona's flash really early, and as soon as that Jarvan came in to gank, just demolished the other lane, demolished the opposing teams as well, and was able to get really fed. Only had one kill throughout the entire game, but I think went 1, 2, and 15 or something like that, helping his team out superbly. It looks like Jonah 98 is hovering over Vi here. What do you think about Vi pick, uh, Sven? I almost called you Shen there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like the Vi pick. He's played it to great effect yesterday already. And it's so confusing because they're picking Vi and they have another on their team called the Vi. 
and in game that can actually be super confusing. I had this problem <laughs> yesterday when casting them, uh, but here we do see it again. And Vi, such a high impact jungler just wherever she goes especially after level six that enemy mid lane has to watch out a lot because that can be a very easy gank for vi she can just come in there with the assault and battery and take someone out really really quickly and here as you mentioned shivana is still open high priority pick jarvin was still open and bg quite happy to take all of these priority picks for themselves here they did lock in the graves as well so we're gonna have janna graves lane yeah, um, Graves was actually banned out in the last game against BG, so going to be interesting to see how Azazo does on that Graves, whether he's able to carry with it, with along with that Janna, supporting him and helping him out with those Eye of the Storms, giving him the extra AD as well, so that's pretty strong actually with a Graves, especially since a lot of your damage is sort of quick drawing in, getting the shot off, and perhaps even using that collateral damage ultimate as well. I was surprised to see Shivana get this far through the picking bands, up to the fourth set of picks, like really not expected at all. Well, BJB have other priorities, I'll say. They wanted the Shen and they wanted the Vi for their top lane and jungle. And BG realized this after the first round, after the Shen had been locked in, and they knew that if they left Vi open, it would probably be picked. So they were like, okay, we can take our time here. We really want the Jarvan, so they locked that in first. And then they went for the Shivana once they were certain that uh, it was not going to be up against them, as we may actually see a Teemo here. We're not going to see a Teemo. It's not going to happen. If it happens, I will squeal like a little girl in delight, but it's not. They've been trolling me all day. Like, like for the last four and games they'll, or they'll so. they'll just keep doing it. Me. They will. He's hovering over Caitlyn at the moment. Had also gone on Ezreal. And Lissandra maybe being brought in the mid lane here, or even as a support. I know that sounds a bit odd, but Lissandra's support can be really strong. Ice Shard, Ring of Frost, big, high damaging, low... Damaging. Uh, low AP scaling skills, like you don't need a huge amount of AP to do a lot of damage with them. And the crowd control and utility she brings to the table as well is just so crucial. That ultimate, if she casts it on herself towards the late game, that's an invulnerability. That's like a free Zanya's hourglass. You don't even have to build it, you have it. And it can just be so, so strong, especially against an all-in te all team like the one we currently see from BG. Shivana wants to dive right on top of you. Graves, same thing. He's almost a melee range AD carry. Like, he has to get so close in order to fully utilize that buckshot. And I'm actually kind of surprised we'll see a Janna Graves lane because lately, League of Legends has been so dominated by, you know, the longer ranged AD carries that can poke well. Lucian, Jinx, Caitlyn, Ezreal maybe. You know, those types of AD carries, but here we actually see a very all-in burst damage AD with Graves, and then the Janna to back him up. Of course, Janna being one of the best peeling supports in the game, she'll be able to protect him quite well. So we see Cassidin locked in here. Cassidin. Ha like, we didn't even mention him. It's Cass like, Cassidin is one of the most sought-after picks and bans in all play at the moment. He's seen a 100% ban ratio at the Battle of the Atlantic and in the LCS promotion qualifier games as well. And I'm amazed that he got this far through. Also, Evelyn hasn't been picked up by either team, one of the strongest junglers at the moment, especially if you can build a tank team around her as well to give her that little bit of extra sort of defense that she needs when you're going for the sort of the early game Evelyn. But Cassidy picking up that teleport as well, it looks like. So going to be trying to roam as much as he can. And this double teleport on BG could be really interesting. Currently, both Shivana and Cassidy have a teleport on them. On the other side, there is Shen, who also has a teleport. That means overall we have four teleport abilities currently on the map. And Shen, of course, really, really nice. He can use a Stand United to get somewhere, then use a teleport to get back. But with a double follow-up out of BG on Shivana and Cassidy, those things can turn around really, really quickly. And BJB have to be careful here that they don't overcommit to something. They really do need to be careful. We are into the three-minute spectator delay, guys. This game between BJB and BG. That's a mouthful there. BJB and BG. On the BJB team, we have Lissandra, Caitlyn, Vi, Shen, and Annie. And on the BG team, we have Janna, Jarvan, Graves, Shivana, and Cassidy being locked in. Pash, this bottom lane, we're going Janna and Graves versus Caitlyn and Annie. What do you think about that? Well, looking at the... Uh... Bottom lane for BJB here, they went with two very popular champions right now that ha really have shown to be strong, which is Caitlyn and Annie. Annie, of course, being the very aggressive early uh, aggression support, with the stuns constantly coming out, Graves does, uh, w will be able to get away with his escape, but still, I do have to agree with Gregus here that Graves' Janna is not something we normally see, but 
PG, if they can make it work, Graves, Janna, as we have said, Janna also a very strong CC slash peeling support. Looking at the later stage of the game here, what do you think in terms of that, Gregos? I think that Janna, towards the late game, can do a huge amount of work for BG. If we look at the lineup from BJB, there is Lissandra, there's a Vi, and there's a Shen. All three of those want to basically be in melee range of BG's carries. If Janna just pops her monsoon, she knocks everyone far, far away. Then, uh, with her Howling Gale, she can, inter she can knock someone up. She has a slow on top of that. She has a shield for someone she wants to protect. And she just has so many skills to help out her team and then that exhaust of course going to be crucial especially at the later stages of the game trying to shut down some of the damage coming out of bjb yeah i mean one of the main problems they're going to have in the early game graves true grip passive is going to give him really good defensive stats and the eye of the storm coming out from janna is going to be great as well but you have annie there with those stuns if she can land a stun into an ignite caitlin getting headshot after headshot after headshot it's going to be very difficult for them to to survive in that lane, especially if that sort of the stun, maybe even stun into a trap combination comes out. So, I like it, I agree with you. They have a great disengage late game. They have a great protect your AD carry team comp, but it's going to be very difficult for them in the early game with Caitlyn having the superior range and all of those stuns coming out from Annie. Well, you must not forget one of the picks going through here for uh, BG, which is of course the Cassadin. They did pick it up, and if it's used effectively in the early game to do what a Cassadin does i.e. go over to other lanes, win them for your team, and then attack combined in the mid to late game stages with a full force of uh, champions that have won their lane thanks to Cassidy intervention. And Cassidy will be really, really strong if he manages to pick up one or two kills. We'll probably see him fall behind a little bit in the early game. I do actually believe that we'll see a 1v1 matchup simply because BJB thinks that their bottom lane is stronger than BG's and will want the 2v2 to shut the enemy AD carry down there. Um, at the same time, that will mean we do have Lissandra up against Cassidy, and the top lane will have uh, Shivana against Shen. Uh, I don't remember who said it. Uh, someone, one of the pro players in an interview, he was like, Shivana's so easy, she's like an AD version of Singed. You farm, then you press W, and you run around, and you win the game. It, really interested to see how he does against that Shen up there in the top lane, whether he can just bully Shen around after a while. They both have the teleport, so that's not an advantage Shen has, actually has over Shivana. Yeah, I mean, both of them have shown very good top laning skills up until now. Skyark doing really well in the last game, and Kanex also on that Shen. I mean, I've seen him on the Shen before. I know how well he can play on that, and it's going to be really, really interesting to see how the response teleports come out to the Stand Uniteds and how Shivana decides to play that lane. Because a lot of the time, you see Shivana in top lane as sort of a proxy farmer. She'll go, she'll push the lane up really hard, which is good against Shen because he finds it very difficult to farm under his tower. But then if he goes in for a Stand United, it's a lot harder to respond in time if you're proxy farming. We are actually into the game now, so I'm going to get into this and put some of our overlay changes into effect, just moving around some of the champions here. And it'll really come down to the way they play this game. There's so much follow-up from BG with those teleports on their team. And then there's the Shen and the Lissandra. Lissandra also, we haven't mentioned this, but she's a very mobile champion as well. If she uses her uh, Path of Frost, uh, Glacial Path actually, to move around the map very quickly, she can really make a huge impact on the bottom or even top lane as well. I have to watch out for her lane opponent though, because she can, uh, that Cassidy can easily do the same once he does hit level six. Crystal Santa having the advantage of hitting the glacial path before level six, so that's going to be her movement spell in lane. We'll probably give her the early advantage too, but here we do see VG moving into the blue side ramp. This might turn into trouble. Yeah, coming in with that Vault Break and not going to be able to hit there on Azazel. And oh, Flash stun! Is it going to be enough? Azazel gets knocked up. Oh, beautiful Shadow Dash as well. Azazel flashes away. Skato is going really low. Ignite got on him as well. Two Ignites burnt there, but they managed to escape at the cost of both of their flashes. But that was a lot of, those were a lot of flashes used all around. Lissandra used both her summoners. Shen flashed. Annie used both her summoners as well. And on the other side, only Janna flashed and Graves used Barrier and Flash. So, uh, BG's bot lane is currently really, really vulnerable if uh, Vi makes her way down there for the in the first four minutes. But on the other side, Lissandra is vulnerable, Shen is vulnerable, and Annie. So that's actually, I don't think BG did too badly in that engagement. 
Yeah, probably came out in their favour in all honesty. I mean, it's a couple of flashes burnt on that bot lane. Makes them a bit more susceptible to ganks, as you said. But Annie's flash, Shen's flash, and that mid lane flash as well gives Jarvan the ability to gank that lane a lot easier. Uh, one little misplay I want to pick up on just right at the start. BJ Skilled has forgotten to buy a, well, get a warding trinket. He hasn't got that warding token. isn't going to be able to place those early wards down. It's probably because he bought a ward as one of his starting items, so just forgot about that. Uh, he could have tried to go back after they saw where the enemy team was, but then he c didn't want to afford uh, losing any minions, so instead he just moved right up into the mid lane. And it's pretty even. I'm really going to be interested to see whether the Luix on his Lissandra can shut down this Cassidy because she, like, he needs to. If Cassidy is allowed to just farm up a bit, stay even close to even in CS, and then move around the map, then he's really going to be far ahead. But currently he's taking a lot of hurt from Lissandra. Well, something we haven't quite picked up on. Just yet, is BJB actually doing the lane switch here in this game, sending their duo lane of Caitlyn and Annie top to deal with that Shivana? They do not want her to get going. It actually surprises me that they send it up top when they could have also sent it mid. It seems like they have enough confidence into the Luex to uh, be able to deal with that Cassidy. And, and as it looks like right now, BG skilled on, on low health. Gonna pop that flask over and over, but at some point it will be enough. But here comes the gank in. Yeah, Jarvan coming in onto this one, the, the flash is still down there on the Lewis, but he's able just to walk away from that one, put a bit of damage down onto him, and gets Jarvan that extra level as well while he ran through that lane, so going to be nice and easy for him. He's going up towards the top lane, and he's going to try and just help out his Shivana. We have seen this 2v1 lane swap in the last game that BJB played. Oh, a beautiful Shadow Dash under the turret there. There's in the bottom lane, Skato going very low, one a couple of more auto attacks, but the exhaust is down, and now Kanex might find himself in trouble as Azadol goes aggressive onto him, but here comes Jonah coming in from the river, he's gonna vault break onto Skato, he's going very low, he's gonna go through the first blood, going over to BJB, now Azadol may be in trouble as well, but he will just dash away, Kanex and Jonah retreat, it's gonna be first blood over to BJB. And that's just something you have to be careful with when you're playing against a champion with a taunt. Shen, Ramis are so good in 1v2 lanes because if they get lucky, if the enemy gets a little bit overconfident, they can taunt you under the tower and it can just turn against you so very, very quickly. You saw it right there and Graves is not safe yet. Yeah, just able to escape from that Vault Breaker and Shadow Dash combination. He's using that Quick Draw as an escape tool, which is really good. It does give you a little bit of extra attack speed, and sort of more inexperienced Graves players will go in and try and get the extra last hits with it because you get that bit of attack speed. But with the Vi and the Shen here in the bottom lane, it's just a bit too dangerous for him to be around. And we do see Annie actually with that um, Vault Thieves Edge. So she really wants to make each one of her spells and auto attacks against the enemy's count and currently up in that uh, 2v1 lane they're not denying Shivana as hard as Shen is denied then again of course Shen already did pick up an assist and went back picked up a Doran's blade and a Doran shield now for himself and tanky early game Shen for that 1v2 lane this has gone about as well for him as it could yes very well indeed they land that shadow dash gave first blood over to his jungler I'm gonna see what he makes out of that advantage because a Vi that gets fed early will be able to apply loads of pressure throughout the early stages of the game, and that is exactly what Jonah will have to do here to uh, solidify the advantage that BJB had been able to pick up here in the early stages of the game. Indeed, and look at this, Cassidy did not even manage to pick up a tier, he has no items yet, and Lissandra has two Doran's rings. Currently, so far, he's still even in CS, but this is when it counts, like around the five minute mark, when Lissandra has a couple of skills, and Cassidy still is not level six yet, so he can't roam, that's when he can really get denied, but so far, I don't think that Lissandra and her team have been making as much of that lane as they could have. For example, if, as you mentioned, they had swapped uh, Caitlyn and Annie into that middle lane, but here's Vi in the bot lane again. Oh, beautiful quick draw there by Azar, so just dodging out from that, and I mean, people talked about his Graves play, and it's been banned out against him before. He's showing that he knows exactly what that champion can do, and just how close he can get to the enemy without getting caught out. Actually out CSing Caitlyn in that top lane, which is a surprise, considering for a, quite a long period he was without his support. Yeah, and really, that is, uh, so far, aside from Janna sadly going down after that beautiful Shadow Dash under the turret, this lane swap so far has gone rather in BG's favor. Cassidy now 11 CS behind, this is what I mentioned, he's got, gotten zoned out pretty hard. Now he's sitting under his tower, got the tier though, so he went back again. And Shivana and Cassidy currently have that teleport. They're all level 6, and this is when they'll will be looking to make things happen. And so far the game is still very much troll.
Graves is up 6 CS, Shivana's up 3 CS, Cassidy's behind only 10, I say only because for a Cassidy that's not actually that much, and this is when they can now start to prove that they are the stronger team here. Oh, no turret picked up yet for either team, the only action that we saw was the first plug over to BJB. Other than that, we haven't seen many gank attempts happen, we did see something on the bottom lane, but Thanks to Graves' quick reaction, Times was able to take the steam out of that one pretty quickly. As it stands so far, it's going to turn into the farming game as both teams are not really that eager to make something happen just yet. Of course, we do have almost everyone on the map now level 6, Annie almost level 6, and I expect to see some hardcore aggression once Annie does get her Tibbers available. They will be looking to get a kill here, at least I would suspect so. Shivana, of course, in that 1v2 situation, already level 6, so she's not quite that easy to kill. And she's pretty beefy, she has that Dorn shield. Hasn't gone back again yet, though. So, she has a lot of gold in her back pocket, and maybe that actually opens up the opportunity, possibly with a little bit of Vi help to take her out. But Vi moving down to the bottom lane, really taking care of that Shen down there. Yeah, and I've been thinking about this while you two were talking, and I'm actually a bit surprised by this lane swap that they decided to go for. I mean, maybe it's because Shivana beats out Shen, and maybe that is a, a matchup, I, it's a matchup I don't know that well. But I think that Shen would probably hold his own to some degree against Shivana. But Graves is out CS and Caitlyn. Shivana's almost out CS and Shen. And if you have an aggressive lane with an Annie support, you really want to be using that early game. Yes, Tibbers is great late game if you can hit that four or five man stun and do a lot of damage. It's superb. But if you have an aggressive support, you want to be up against a 2v2 lane so that you can use that aggression, use your ignite, use your spell thief's edge as you were talking about to get as much damage down onto your opponents as possible. And by 2v1 lane switching, it really hasn't worked out for them. Oh, dodge of the shadow dash there. Uh, aggression still going here from Kanex, but uh, as the Vi and Damien Marley show back up in lane, we do see VG quickly retreating. They don't want any part of this aggression. And finally, BJB have realized they were losing the tire pressure game as well. Their bottom tower is almost dead, and they've only taken about half of the HP off of BG's top tower. So they were like, okay, we have to do something, and got Annie and Caitlyn to move down to the bottom lane, wanted that Shadow Dash to, la to land from Shen, and then have the follow-up from their AD carry and support. But now they've switched the lanes back, and we'll see what they can make happen now, as Graves and Jenna are indeed moving down there as well, so they're not switching anything back either. Yeah. Moving around towards this mid lane, I mean, the, but the bottom lane is going to be interesting because now we have the Annie and Caitlyn. They've hit six, maybe that's what they were waiting for. Hits, hitting six, so they've got that burst combination off with Ace in the hole and the Tibbers. But Cassidy in this mid lane is going along one of two Cassidy paths. And basically, the two paths you can do is you max your Void Pulse, which is your E and do or it's force pulse which is your e and do a lot of aoe damage in a slow or you max your no sphere which is your q and you try and harass down your opponent as much as possible this casting's gone for the no sphere bg skill deciding that he wants to try and harass down this lissandra as much as possible and not going for the wave clear as such he's csing superbly along with it as well which allows him to do that and it means that he has a lot more one-on-one -on -one damage as opposed to trying to get the damage for team fights later on and he has 1,550 gold in his back pocket right now. Once he goes back, he can actually start getting the big items. I do believe he would probably first go for the boots in order to have even more mobility and roam around the map, or for that Catalyst, the Protector, just uh, so he can ramp up even more towards that late game with the Rod of Ages as we see a flash mid. We see a flash mid indeed, but I did not quite see that because the Director Camera did not decide to switch over to that. But as it stands, flash was burned, but nothing much else from that. Yeah, the Ice Tomb came out, the Frozen Tomb came out there from Lissandra, but there was a nice Rift Walk, so the skill shot landed, well, sorry, the skill landed, but because the Rift Walk had been cast before the uh, uh, Frozen Tomb actually landed on Kasten, he was able to still Rift Walk back behind his tower and keep himself safe, which meant that that flash was burnt for nothing there in the mid lane. And a very nice ward in the top lane, keeping Shivana safe, and she's really been playing this lane pretty well. Shen actually had his, has an advantage over her currently, he's out trading her, just because he has three Doran's items. He's got the double Doran's blade, a Doran's shield, and a ruby crystal, so he's got a lot of raw early game stats that won't help him as much as the game goes on, whereas Shivana, with that giant spell, is pretty beefy, but she can't take him in damage just yet. It'll take a little, little bit longer, but at some point, I do believe that Power Spike will turn around, fight bot! 
Bottom line, the flash force out of the Vi. Collateral damage was used, but not to its fullest effect. That's the Tibbers out coming from the Vi. Eamon Mallory deep inside, trying to deal as much damage onto Azrael as possible. There's a the Monsoon, but it pushes Eamon Mallory into a better position. But there's a teleport in from Castle, and he shows up, takes up one kill. In the meanwhile, Caitlyn able to take down Janna. And they're going to be the next target. He has a flash in from Damien Marley. Tries to take him down, but he will go down to Castle, and it's going to be a double kill. I just quickly, before was... Gregus interrupts, I want to just talk about one major thing in that team fight. The Stand United was cancelled by Dragon's Ascent. Skyark beautifully cancelled that and managed to keep Shen out of that fight. That was huge. And that was a perfect reaction from BG. They made it count for them. They just got two kills onto Cassidy, which is not something you ever want in a game where you have a Cassidy against you. He's scary enough as is, and when he gets kills, he gets rolling really, really quickly. And as, as you mentioned, that Dragon's Descent up there in the top lane was crucial for the good outcome of that fight. Interrupting the Stand United on Shen completely negated all the chances he had. He didn't have the teleport up either, so he couldn't join the fight afterwards. And Cassidy's teleport was beautifully timed. Sadly, Janice still went down, but that was a two-for-one exchange and really gave them a lot of advantages. Mid-tower, though, gonna go down here as the first tower in the game. Very well indeed. BJB picking up the first turret of the game after giving up two kills in the bottom lane, but they're still sitting at a uh, around 2,000 gold advantage 13 minutes into the game. Two to two in kills. Both these teams very even, and both of them showing why they are in the finals and why they are contending to win that grand 3,200 RP grand prize, plus, of course, the triumphant rise skin. And both of these AD carries are looking to do the same thing. Both of them have already picked up BF swords. Both of them on one of their first backs, so they were actually matching that evenly in the last fight. And now after going back again, there's also a Vamp Scepter on, on Graves. And a Longsword that will probably go into the Vamp Scepter on Caitlyn. So both of these very even. Graves has a Vamp Scepter while Caitlyn already has the Berserker of Screeves. But that's really the only advantage. It's 110 to 111 CS. So really, really close bot lane there. And nothing is decided just yet. Castens become scary now, but there was a tower traded back, and it's actually a 1,500 gold advantage in favor of BJB. Yeah, and a lot of that gold is going to be coming from this mid lane and from the jungle. Vi, about 18 CS ahead of um, of the Jarvan there, who's on 53, which is a good amount of CS. Hasn't really got the ganks off that he would like to get. Vi, obviously, getting that early gank, getting the kill in the bottom lane on that Janna, but. I, one of the major things that's happened here is because Cassidy had to roam, he's gone behind in CS a little bit, about 15 CS behind, and that's what you expect on Cassidy in the early game. He kept up so well on CS at the start of the game, up until about the 80-90 CS mark, until he used that teleport, and since then, Lissandra pushed that lane up, got a lot of extra CS, and was able to take that tower down, which means Cassidy is always going to have to get back to the lane, push it back, because otherwise they're going to lose a lot of map pressure and a lot of vision if they lose that second tower. And lissandra has gone for a lot of early damage. She's already finished the Deathfire Grasp now. So she's got a lot of burst damage. If she catches one of the squishier targets, she can almost one-shot Janna at this point, because Janna doesn't have a lot of magic resist. All she has is the Sightstone, which at least gives her a little bit of extra HP. And she's rushing uh, the Talisman of Ascension next in order to give her entire team that nice little speed boost. But she's really going to be vulnerable against Lissandra. And even Cassidy, even though he's got that uh, Catalyst, the Protector, which gives him a, lot, a nice amount of health, he's still pretty vulnerable, but they're looking to make a four-man stack in the bot lane here. They're moving down there, BG Skull coming in from behind, meeting Damien Marley, look at the damage coming down, barrier is forced out, but Vi is also right there, there's a Stand United coming in from Kenex, but he was just too far outside, there's the Tibbers used, Azrael managing to take down Annie though, there's the Assault and Battery out to Azrael, he's gonna move on to BG Skill, who manages to rift walk away just in time, but now Kenex landing the Shadow Dash onto Jarvan, Teleports. there's a Cat Damien Marley, he will go down right there, the fight still goes on, as Jarvan going very low, has to stay out of the damage, there's Lissandra coming in there, Frozen Tomb Blues on Skato 55, he will go down here as well, it ends in a 2 for 1, or does it end, BG, Skyark now going onto the Luex, going very low, Jonah also behind the turret, low health bars all over the place for BJB, will they go for the dive here, BG Skyark going in pretty deep, they take down the turret, Deal some damage, but it's gonna stay with the two for one in that bottom lane. And if you ask me, the, the Shivana teleport was pretty late. She could have gotten there a little bit sooner and that would have completely turned the fight around. In the beginning, there was a beautiful engagement from BJB, uh, from BG I mean, uh, with Cassidy and Jarvin coming down there. Annie did not register, did not coordinate well with her team, and was way out in front. 
still trying to aggress onto Graves as the rest of her team was already backing off Fi and Caitlyn, moving back towards their own tower, trying to stay safe. And then the fight kind of snowballed. The Stan United came in, which was beautiful, saved one of, one of his team members, and then there was a series of really nice disengages out of BJB. They got two members out of there with really low health bars, and with BG not able to pick up that dragon after the fight, that actually went really in favor of BJB in my opinion. It did, but they have actually, they are a bit ahead in the gold, about 300 gold ahead, but that's been reduced from, as you said, I think it was 1,500 gold ahead early on, so really nicely done by BG to get themselves back into this. Four kills to three, I think Cassadin still 2-0-1, hasn't died yet, he's got a little bit of extra CS under his belt as well, but it's a dragon being started off here, though. Oh, there's a flash in from the Vi, the Tibbert is used directly onto Adderley. Will's getting shielded by Janna and Adamai, maybe in a little bit of trouble as BG's Gold comes in, he's gonna go down, do the collateral damage used by Graves. They're now onto the Luwak, the Cataclysm is actually used out of Jarvan, the Force gets knocked up by the Howling Gale, uses the Frozen Tomb, but will ultimately go down, ace in the hole, attempted onto Skato, but gets caught out by Azrael now. They're gonna go on to Damien Marley as well, will you pick up this kill as well? He's gonna flash, he's gonna 90 caliber, but there's the Rift Block in from BG Skill, he's still looking for blood. In the meanwhile, Jonah 1898 and actually using the Assault and Battery, Trying to take down Azrael, but he's getting very low as well. He vault breaks in, trying to take down his target. And Cassidy picks himself up another double kill. That was a 4 for 0 exchange this time around. They did lose the dragon, but they picked up 4 kills for themselves. This is huge for BG. That was a very, a rather sloppy fight from BJB. Annie went very deep. She flash ignited Tibbert onto a Graves, but there was not enough follow-up from her team. L Lissandra still tried to go in afterwards, but it was too late. She used the Deathfire Grasp onto Graves, but he was able to get away cleanly. And after that, it just turned around on them. Annie had no way to get out of there anymore, as she had already burnt the Flash, was caught out. Then, the chase was on out of BG, and they just mopped up. And even though a dragon went over to BJB, four kills is nothing to laugh at, especially with a 4-0-3 Cassadin, a 2-0-3 Graves, and a 0-3-7 support. We have three members on um, BG with seven out of eight kills participation, and the other members, like, Shivana's the only one without any kills of assist. The rest of their team is getting really nice gold income here. Yeah, really, really good for them. They are pushing themselves into a commanding position, and... That Graves plays really well. Vi went a bit too deep on trying to get the kill on Azazo there and got taken out. Uh, that was Vi, not the Vi. Jonah. Jonah went a bit too deep trying to get the kill there onto Azazo and was just a bit greedy, really, trying to get back onto him. Nice Eye of the Storm Shield coming out from Scatto, playing that Janna, keeping him alive and managing to pick up another kill for them. <laughs> this is just going to be the story of the game. In top lane, 146 CS to 146 CS. Spirit Visage against Sunfire Cape. Both of these top laners very, very evenly matched. And they're just pushing back and forth a bit. And the important thing here is that Shivana keeps interrupting the Stand United with that Dragon's Descent. Stand United is up. So is Dragon's Descent right now. And once the next fight does break out, that's going to be another crucial thing to watch out for. Shivana almost has a teleport again. Shen still has much longer left on his, so if BG are able to capitalize off of that, Cassadin has his available as well, so they can try make something happen here in about one minute, when Shivana's teleport is back up, but I don't think, really, it, there aren't any objectives up for grabs here right now. They took out the dragon, they took out the bottom tower already, next thing to focus on would probably be the mid tower, but the question is, do they want to pull Graves and Janna all the way over there for that? I mean, they'd already take down that bottom lane turret, but uh, Graves and Jenna still deciding to stay in that bottom lane, get some farm going. It's currently 160 CS to 157. Of course, it is up two kills on that 130. Caitlyn she hasn't been having the best of games so far. But as it stands, game after a, uh, a series of very action packed fight has gone back to slumber as all of the laners are are on their lanes 20 minutes in still looking to get some farm going and farm up for the late game team fights they are going to be glorious and you can really see how afraid bjb is off the bg team look at this they have one two three four wards towards the bottom half of the map actually one just expired so now it's three they're scared of that cassadin coming down there it's happened several times that cassadin and jarvin moved through the enemy jungle and got down there on scene but now we actually have a 4v4 standoff here around the blue buff area 
Ooh, teleport coming in and as well. Are they going to go in for it? Oh, it got cancelled. It got cancelled. Shen teleport being cancelled out again. And Zazel getting really low. He's got Co uh, in the frozen tomb. He's been ignited as well. Trying to life steal off the Vi. The Vi picks up Scatter and there's an ace in the hole kill. Hellion is still in the middle of this. Kassadin is there as well, but everyone is still on really high health here. And BG still jumping in, trying to get the kill. No! Massive, massive fight. Beautifully done there. Shen coming in with a stand united as well. Wow. That was just miscommunication on the side of BG. They had Shivana teleporting into four members of BJB, so she had to cancel it. She's actually in trouble here. That's the flash away after getting aggressed upon by four m members of BJB. They are looking for blood here, mostly for tower blood, but once that's down, they may be going on to Skyarchy quickly retreats before they have the chance to do that. But it is BJB picking up a major teamfight win, and also a turret bringing up their gold lead to almost 3,000 at this point. And really, as I said, it was miscommunication. Shivana had to cancel the teleport, and that was the signal for Annie to go in. That was a beautiful Tibbers, stunning up vulnerable targets out of BG. Both Janna and Graves were caught out there. And then just the entire damage piled on top, and a mistake there was that Shivana, after canceling the teleport, started walking towards the bottom half of the map, which left Shen alone, and he could complete his stand united in peace for the first time in this game that swung it around even more in BJB's favor they were able to pick up a triple kill onto Caitlyn which really puts her head in this game again and now she has that static shift on and another cloak of agility already completed as well their push then came out of BG they picked up a tower for themselves making it two to two thousand six hundred gold lead right now for BJB what can they do here now well, we talked a lot about the Sandra's early game damage, and you talked about how she was building towards that with the Death Eye Grasp. She's got another needlessly large rod, and it's going to be difficult for BG to counteract this. They're a little bit behind in the gold. It's only a slight amount. What they really need to do is start catching people out. They've got a great catch team. Cassadin, Graves can burst people down exceptionally quickly. They don't want to be fighting against a team that has Stand United on it. They don't want to be fighting against a team where Lissandra's got her frozen tomb off. They've lost another dragon here, and that's the second one of the game going down to BJB. And that was a beautiful rotation. I really love the way BJB did that. Oh, just... The frozen tomb on the Skeddo 55. He manages to flash away, but the fight breaks out. Jonah 98N now in the middle of three BG members. But they turn the aggression around and the teleporter actually does come in right there. BG Sky up going very low. There's the monsoon force out of Skeddo 55. Oh, oh the wow. from the Tempers. That's going to be two kills. BG Skill going to be the next target. It's going to be another kill over to Annie Skyark. And Hellion managed to get away from this one, but said it's another major teamfight win, plus the dragon for BJB. And BJB are playing this so nicely. They had so many words in the BG team's jungle. Went for dragon in a 4v5 situation, but they said, okay, Shivana used everything. She had cancelled her teleport. Doesn't, of course, have an innate one. And then Shen was up in the top lane. He didn't have a stand united yet, but he still had his teleport. So they just said, okay, we have all the advantages on the map right now, let's go. And they took out Dragon really, really quickly, retreated, had Shen teleport in, and then went for the fight. Beautiful flash Tibbers once more out of the Vi, that Annie really doing work there, and it was another huge team fight win in favor of BJB here. Yeah, really nice fighting by them, being able to pick up those kills and what? I mean, that Tibbers. Uh, up until this point, Annie had looked a little bit lackluster and honestly not ha landing the Tibbers in the way that you'd want to. I Remembering back to the last dragon fight where she tried to catch Graves out and didn't really manage to do it. But there, three man Tibbers on the three squishiest targets on the opposing team. Really beautifully done and won her team that team fight. This is looking really scary right now for BG. They have to make something happen. They had a very strong early game. We're snowballing Cassidy and farther and farther ahead. And all of a sudden, two team fights just went heavily against them. One, a 4 for 0 trade and then a 3 for 0 trade, I believe. Plus losing a dragon, plus losing the top tower. There are just so many things going wrong for them right now. And it's 4 to 2 in towers, 10 to 9 in kills. 6,000 gold lead for BJB, larger than it has been this entire game so far. And Lissandra, not scared, is not going for the Zhonya's Hourglass. She's rushing the Rabadon's death cap. Annie, looking to build towards that Haunting Guys as well. Actually, she has the Haunting Guys. She's looking to pick up Leandri's Torment, put, dish out even more damage. And this is just looking very scary here for BG. Yeah, it's looking very scary indeed. Has been a game of turnarounds. You see BJB trying to set up a death brush here, but there's no one there to... Bring the trap so they will retreat from that.
as it stands, this has been a game of many turnarounds. We did see BJB in the lead, then BG pulling off a good team fight, getting themselves the lead. Now it's BJB back in the lead again, and the lead is bigger than ever. As you have said, 6,000 gold. It's the highest of leads that we've seen so far in this game. And the question is, can BJB make use of that immense advantage they have right now and try to close out this game and bring an early win in the series into their pockets? I mean, Shivana currently has a teleport again because, of course, she cancelled it earlier so the cooldown was lower than if she had actually used it, meaning it's up just as the Stand United is as well. That kind of mitigates the split pushing threat out of Shen because they can say, okay, we can still fight a 5v5 if need be. And this is a beautiful push here. Very nice call from BG rushing down that mid lane. There are currently no members from BG, BJB to react to this. They had three people bought. And now they could lose a lot of mid tower damage, but the wave is not there to push with them. Yeah, that's the major problem. That wave was all the way back near their inhibitor turret when they decided to start that push, and it means that the entire BJB team can be there and stop that wave from coming up. It's very dangerous for them to stay around, especially with this Caitlyn five kills. Annie with that Tibbers up as well, going to be doing a lot of damage. And basically, all they can do at the moment is let Shivana push this top lane and try and get this tower down, which she's going to do. Shivana did get the top tower, making it three to four in towers now, so they're getting a little bit of the map pressure back in their favor. Shivana, of course, already picking up that Spectre's Cowl as well, looking to get, uh, I would expect, also Spirit Visage, just because it's such a strong item for basically anyone these days. Uh, as Cassadin picking up, looking to pick up his Rabadon Staff Cap as well. And as we look at the items, still pretty even. Both of the top laners have two completed items. Both of the junglers, well, Bai theoretically is ahead because she has two completed items, but there's also Ruby Sightstone on Jarvan. And we see the Season 4 impact. If you look across the map, there are always so many wards out. But even though there are two Ruby Sightstones on the side of BG, so far the vision advantage has always been in BJB's favor. Yep, BJB surely do know where to ward and when to ward to make those situations happen that turn out in their favor as it stands. BG. They have to be looking for something. They need to make a play or two to get back into this game. As it stands, 28 minutes in, the gold lead is still in favor of BJB. A margin of 6,000 almost. 5,800 at this point, and they're making the move onto the spot. And there goes the Huge comes to engage! Fight. The glacial path going into that ice storm. It's going to be tons of damage. Shen standing nice in as well. Kassadin trying to jump in. Teleport in. Nice dragons to take him. Knock everyone back. Kassadin's going very low. And he picks up a double kill. Shivana getting the Sandra. She's going to run after Kaylin here. Might be able to chase her down. Kaylin has a lot of damage. Here comes Shen. Is it going to be enough? Vi is here as well. Nice shadow dash. Damian Marley managing to survive that one with Vi getting the kill. It's a two for one for three exchange. Three for one exchange indeed, and that was another beautifully played fight from BJB. They said, okay, look, we have these and these and these advantages right now. Shen can freely stand United in, completely uninterrupted, completely unharmed from anything. He just went in there, protected his team. That was a very deep dive under a turret, and they went out three for one. Dragon is just back up. They can just rotate over there, take that down as well. Pick up more advantages for themselves. That was beautifully done. That was a teleport out of Shivana as well. Shen still has it. His. So they can just go back to even more split pushing, moving Shen back to the top lane. Janna here actually going pretty far out, pretty alone. And there's a teleport Ooh, a coming teleport. in now from Kassadin. Ooh, this might turn into something. As Hoyan does jump straight in. And there's a Kassadin. Cataclysm is actually used. The Vi and Jonah are both caught. There, Kassadin does some damage though. Taking down the Caitlyn, they're now going to go on to Jonah as well. Will he be able to survive this one? No, it's a double kill over to Cassidy, and BG will just barrel down this middle lane here and potentially pick themselves up a middle inner turret. That was a beautiful teleport out of Cassidy. I cannot, like, that was just such a good call from BG. They said, okay, they got the dragon, but they're low, they're wounded, and we have a Cassidy teleport. So he goes all the way behind enemy lines, picks off the Caitlyn to the side while the rest of the team focuses down Vi and Annie. There is nothing that BJB could do against that. And now they've not only lost an inhibitor, they're, inhibitor. Tower, they're going to lose their inhibitor. And that Shen can't huge. do anything against this. Yeah, beautiful Monsoon actually coming out from Janna, healing everyone up and also knocking Shen away from the inhibitor turret, meaning they could take that and get the inhibitor. Lissandra hadn't got back to base yet. That is a massive, massive play here by Black Genesis. It's not something that is allowed to happen at this point in the game. You, you just can't afford to 
to have these things happen to you at this point there's a ward in that bush as well so the advance on baron has been spotted and even though they want to go for it casting picks oh. someone off the lewis going aggressive here onto the uh skill going aggressive onto the lewis but the assault barrack out of vi immediately follows the fight breaks out lewis going very low but he will be able to get away from this one and now lots of low health bars for both teams hellion going very low they're on to kanax bg skyrock will pick up the kill hellion getting targeted by the ace in the hole but it will get caught as well in the meanwhile picking up the vi this oh! could be very very huge just a wow. double kill for grave so far and now they're gonna go on to Jonah and Damien Marley as well. But they're going pretty low themselves. Skate of 55 gets picked up. Pronounce the Admiral's distraction. Oh, that's BG sick. Skills Double double kills. Kills. And he won't be able to pick up the kill. It's gonna be the ace for BG. Down. This is incredible. The back and forth fighting is so ridiculous. And Graves, with a beautiful collateral damage, picked up one kill around the side there on Lissandra that was sneaking around the edges trying to make something happen. And then Cassidy goes back in with almost no HP and tries to take take down Caitlyn, and it was so close, and she almost managed to survive it, to tell the tale, very, very close there, but overall, BG beautifully playing that entire engagement with uh, Cassidy, catching out Lissandra at the start of that fight, Lissandra was so low, she couldn't really utilize her damage either, her ultimate was completely wasted, and one of the Nexus Towers almost went down for that, BJB cannot afford to stay outside of their base for that long. I'm... Um. I am in awe of that fight. It was just perfect micro damage that was coming out from BJB. Cassidy went in onto Lissandra. She went really low. Had to use that frozen tomb on herself. Backed out. Used the glacial path and her flash to get away from the fight. Cassidy managed to get out of the stun coming out from Annie as well. The tippers came down. Almost took him down. He managed to rift walk away again. Azazel went in. Skyark was tanking up basically the, the entire We're team get the Baron. Baron. Baron is being started now. Caitlyn is at red buff, Annie was just in base, there's nothing, there's no reaction from BJB, they can't stop this, they can't contest it, they have really? to take it as it comes, and now after this, BG are still so healthy, they can just rotate over to the top lane, take another inner turret, and pressure that, the middle inhibitor is still down, so they have all the advantage on the map. Oh, uh, it's in trouble, gets aggressive punch, Danny United is used, but they will be able to take her down before it comes through, that's another kill over to Graves, and he is going big in this game, 7-3-7, seven, seven, as BG take every advantage they can get and this is not looking good for bjb at all there is now so much pressure on this top lane mid lane still has super minions bottom lane is currently pushing in their favor at least so that's the only relief they have bottom lane will not be something they have to take care of but they're gonna lose this top inner turret and possibly even more lissandra still has 20 seconds on that death timer it's pretty long at this point even though ultimates are up on both sides they don't really have the means to to fight off this assault from bg here I, it's amazing that we say BG are in the ascendancy, that they're winning, they need to, you know, push for the win now. They're behind in gold, they are 1,300 gold behind the opposing team. Yes, they have Baron, that gives you a lot of stats, about 6,000 golds worth of stats for your entire team, but they're behind! How are they doing this? They've made some incredible team fights, some incredible plays, and they're getting turret after turret after turret now, pushing themselves closer to equal gold. And when you get a Cassidy who's fed, a Graves who's fed, a Jarvan who has been a huge tank throughout this entire game, and the Shivana as well, it's just very difficult to fight against them. And this is what you just mentioned. They've had the nice team fights. You can win a game while behind in gold if you have the right engagements. They've had beautiful map awareness for the past two, three fights, beautiful wards, map pressure, and just focus down the right targets. Their micromanagement was huge. They always get the low health targets out of the fight and then just rotate the damage around. <coughs> and due to this, even though, as you said, they're still down in gold, but they've been able to win out the team fights and then pressure the objectives. They've taken down Baron, they've taken down Towers, they, the middle inhibitor is now back, but they have so much map pressure right now that I'm not sure if BJB can actually defend that for long. BG. Having found the formula needed to win this game, all their prior teamfight wins have come from one simple fact, the fact that they caught out a target, thus starting it, and then focusing the correct targets during the fight, always switching to whoever needs to be killed most at that exact moment. They are playing the teamfight so beautifully, getting these advantages for themselves, and now that they're... Well, they're technically not ahead, they have the Baron, but they're still even in gold, bang even, actually, even though they are uh, ahead four kills and two turrets. BJB are still holding on, this game is not gone for them just yet.
And the one thing I want to mention here is something that we don't typically see these days. Janna is a full team support, and I love her item pickups. She's got the Talisman of Ascension to speed her entire team up. And she has the Boots of Mobility so she can roam around quickly, put down wards, with the Captain Enchantment. That's a pretty expensive one, but it's huge in a game like this, where you need to get your entire team movement speed and combined with her passive that already speeds up teammates, that's huge. Then she has a Mikkel's Crucible to get a target out of that Annie stun, which is really the big thing that can hurt BG in these fights. And then she's building towards Ezeki's Herald. She's just helping out her team with everything she does, and it's huge, and it's been helping them so massively. And if she can keep that up and keep up the good monsoons, the good Howling Gales, that's really just one of the factors that helped BG win out all of these past team fights. Yeah, this Janna is never saying never, building everything to stop her teammates from dying. She is babying them as much as she can, and I, she is not going to stop being able to do that for the entire game. The Zeke's Hell is going to help out with that attack speed as well, and they are pushing down this bot lane inhibitor turret, and Shivana is splitting on the mid lane. I mean, that is the one thing that Graves, in this case, is a little weaker at as a close range burst AD carry. He's not that good at poking down the towers, especially against as much wave clear as is coming out of a Caitlyn with a static shiv and an Annie. But with his pressure coming in onto the middle and bot lane, maybe BG will actually manage to slowly poke down the towers. But for now, it doesn't quite look like they found the angle yet. Top lane will be pushing their, in their favor as well though. So maybe if they keep the siege up a little bit longer, they will actually be able to grab the upper hand here and take down either another Nexus tower or that middle inhibitor. Currently sieging BJB's base, full on, constantly waiting outside for those minion waves to come in and make a push. Now that there are no waves currently to be had, they're gonna move into BJB's jungle and uh, pick up some uh, golems and buffs, wraiths, just plunder the enemy jungle for everything they have. And once the minions are back, they're gonna move back to lane and continue the siege right away. And of course, Baron comes back up in a little bit less than two minutes now. That's going to be the next huge thing here, and we'll have to see whether BG are able to keep up this pressure. Because if they can keep BJB confined to their base when Baron comes up, that may be a very easy opportunity for BG then to, in turn, rush down Baron and have that advantage for themselves again. Right now, they're doing the right thing. They're keeping all the lanes pushing to the enemy's base, eating up all of the jungle farm that there is for them and kind of starving BJB of that little bit of gold. Now there's a blue buff that they can steal away, and they just need to keep it up for another one and a half minutes until Baron is up, take that down, and then they can push for the win. Yeah, because they're confining BJB into their base, BJB have no vision on anything outside of the... I was going to say the four walls of their base, but it's basically two big walls. The two big walls of their base, they have wards all over the map here, but nothing further into their jungle. We see Annie and Shen pushing out as far as they dare to get these wards out, but nothing near Baron, nothing near Dragon, nothing near the objectives that we expect BJ, uh, BG to want to take. And it's something that once you have an inhibitor down and are pu being pushed back that far, it's something you can't afford to do. You cannot roam outside of your base, and there's no reason to do so as either in that situation right then and there. Because there were no objectives on the map, there was nothing you could really do, and you had the minion waves basically coming to your doorstep because the waves were being pushed by BG. So they could free farm inside the base, but now they stuck inside the base for a long, long time, even though there was no sign from BG. The minion waves are actually fighting themselves in the middle of the lanes. Baron is back up in 20 seconds, and there's still zero vision out of BJB. They have that one ward near the blue buff, but even that did not spot Jarvan. And BG here currently in complete control. BJB are so scared of BG's team right now. Even only behind 3,000 gold, but in terms of pressure, BG definitely having the upper hand here right now. We do see BJB ready to leave their base now, but BG will just set up a death brush in the middle of that river area. Will the trap snap? They know that the entirety of BJB is there, thanks to that ward just by that wall. They're now going to move over to the blue buff, still in full vision of BG. They're just going to wait around that barren area, see if they can make a pick. As it stands, BJB, no vision at all. This is huge. One little misstep from either team can cost them the game at this point. 
really neither team wants to make that mistake. Annie could try flash over the wall and stun someone, but that's really, really risky. They don't want to go for that. There are a couple of wards out. This Baron Dance will just continue. However, there's a huge wave in the bot lane. Janna may be getting caught here. No, nope, she's safe. There's a huge wave in the bot lane, pushing in favor of BJB. A pretty sizable wave in the mid lane. So for now, both of the teams are going to back off, reset, and uh, someone from BG has to take care of that bot lane. Of course, Shivana and Kassadun have their teleport up, so that shouldn't really be an issue for them. One of the things that they could decide to do is a sneaky Baron here. Graves and Jarvan both have abilities to jump into that Baron pit from behind the pit, from the red side of the jungle. If they could do that, they could take it away, just the two of them. Jarvan is tanky enough and Graves has enough damage for them to be able to sneak that one away. Descent. Yeah, and the Dragon's Descent as well if you want to use that. So they have enough damage to take that one away really quickly. And that is exact. oh wow. My prediction skills today, I'm just saying. Oh, <laughs> so oh, you are in Oracle. Teach me your ways. Cassidy, of course, with a uh, Rift Walk as well. So they have four members in the Baron pit, one over the wall, and they do take another uncontested Baron. And now they have to retreat, clear out that minion wave in the mid lane, and then they can just take complete control of the entire map again. Very nicely played now. 3,700 gold in the lead. The gold lead does not look that massive, but as we've mentioned, the map control just hugely in their favor. Dragon is up right now. Uh, but I don't even think it's going to be something they care that much about at this point. That gold is not as vital. And even though it would be a nice little thing for BJB to pick up in order to try and come back, I don't think they dare go out that far. And if they do, they will probably pay for it with parts of their base. Yep, BJB. Ever since they lost that middle inhibitor, the spirit has just been gone. They spend most of their time waiting just in front of their middle inhibitor, waiting for BG to come and maybe try to turn a fight around right there that could potentially bring them back into the game. But as it stands, they're prisoners in their own base, while BG wrecks havoc on everything on the map. They apply pressure, they're pushing all lanes, they are preparing for that final push that will hopefully win them the game, and they're gonna have Baron. One little tidbit that I want to mention that I really like the three Farsight Orbs plus two Sweeping Lenses on Team BJB. They know they can't ward properly, so they're buying these totems and trying to make up for the vision loss with that, with the scouting abilities and whatnot. Death push! It's Death push! They're going in! So much damage going down onto the graves! Oh, beautiful monsoon! Ace in the hole coming out, it hits onto the Jarvan instead! Kanix is trying to get in, nice teleport coming in here from Shivana. Are they going to engage? No, they just back away from that one. Tippers came down as well, but that gets taken out, and Zaza is already back to full life. But I mean, that was a lot. Those were a lot of ultimates. Tibbers, Stan United, Assault and Battery. They're gonna move in. Kara gives the Dragons to send. Ezo picks up a double kill right off the bat. And now BJB in full retreat. They have to get away from this one. And it will lose them the game. Scaled it directly onto Damien Marley. Look at the damage going down on onto him. He's looking for kills here. Riftbox back in. Jonah gets picked up by him. Damien Marley and Kanex forced back to the fountain, but BG is inside BJB's base. They are right there. They just have the next turrets right in front of them. Kanex and Damien Marley will have to fend this one off completely by their own, but the rip walk in from BG skills. Look at the damage going down onto that Caitlyn. Nice deal, yes, Kanex will go down as our Zazel is legendary. He will pick himself up Kanex as well. The Nexus turrets are going down. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be BJ taking down BJB in game one of the EGL Summoner's Shield number 17 grand final. That was only game one though, we have two more to come, and that was a really nice last stand there from BJB, they tried to combo all their abilities together to pick up some kills, turn around the game, did not work out, so they lost this round, but we have maybe even two more games to come, they can still win everything here, if they play this right now. Yep, and we'll be back in just five minutes with the next round, uh, the next game of this best of three in the finals. Remember, they're playing for 3,200 RP each and a Triumph and Rise skill. This is the EGL Summoner's Shield number 17 Grand Finals. I'm Sona, and I'm casting today with Gregus and Apache. See you guys very, very shortly.